Hi guys, it's Sue and welcome back to Beauty Fortified. If you're new here, welcome. I make hair care, skincare and makeup videos for the more mature women. And today I'm trying out the Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation with an SPF of 15. Now this has been out on the market for a very, very long time, but I've never tried it. And one of the things that really tempted me was the fact that they do sell it in mini sizes. So I think it comes in a 15 mil and a 30 mil. And so that means that if you fall in love with it, you can buy a high end foundation at quite an affordable price. And when you do have as many foundations as I do, 15 mil is just the perfect amount. I really don't need a full bottle. So that was one of the things that inspired me to try the foundation. I've also read a lot of reviews online, a lot of very mixed reviews online about its longevity and its wear and how fabulous it is or how awful it is, etc. So I decided to get my hands on two little samples before I make the full purchase. So a little bit about my skin. I'm 51 years old. I have fine lines, wrinkles, and large pores, and I do have quite a lot of texture on my skin. I do have normal combination skin, so I'm looking for a foundation that is going to smooth my skin, is going to control oils, and is going to last me a good 8 to 10 hours. So this foundation comes in a glass bottle, 30 mil with a pump. It also comes in, as I say, a mini version. I think it's a 15 mil version. Let's see what they say about the foundation. They say that it's ideal for normal to oily skin. Why is it different? They say it visibly minimizes pores. Well, I need that like anything. It strengthens skin's barrier over time. It also hydrates while instantly helping to conceal redness and discoloration. Helps keep excess oil and shine in check. Well, I really need that as well. Making it a perfect foundation for oily skin. And it stays true to color for up to 16 hours. So it really sounds absolutely fabulous. It sounds like a foundation that is really up my alley. Now a little bit of a spoiler alert. This is not a first impression. So I did try this on yesterday and I had some very mixed views about it. But I do like to give products, especially foundations, a second chance. So I thought I would try it on again here today for you. So yesterday when I tried it, I used the color Natural Tan and I applied it with a brush. So today I'm going to use a combination of natural tan on one side of my face and cool natural on the other side and I'm going to use a different technique of application for each side and that's just to give this foundation the absolute absolute fairest chance that it can have. So now on to the application. I've prepped my skin and the sunscreen that I'm using today is my Clinique Super City Block. I like this one because it does smooth my complexion and it is oil free. So I really like that. Then the two shades that I've got are Natural Tan and Cool Natural. Now I'm going to go in with Natural Tan on this side of my face and that's the shade that I used yesterday but I am going to apply it with a sponge this time. So I'm just going to take a few dots of this and just dot it all over my face. It isn't a very emollient foundation. So if you put one dab on your skin and you try to blend that out, it is going to be a little bit dry. It seems to kind of just soak into the area where you've put on the foundation. So that's why I'm dotting it around a little bit today. And I'm going to go in with the sponge and I'm just going to blend that out all over the side of my face. So that's one layer of the foundation. Now I can still see my skin peeking through. So this is a very, very light coverage. So we might build that up in a little bit. But the shade is really great. I mean, it does look good for my skin tone. And that's what I thought yesterday as well. So I'm quite happy with this. It just gives quite a light layer. But as I say, it is medium to full coverage. So the foundation is definitely buildable. So on this side of my face, I'm going in with Cool Natural. Again, I'm going to just dot it to give it the best chance of blending. 
So you'll see it's not a highly, highly pigmented foundation. So I have got quite a few dots on that side. And now I'm going to go in just with my usual foundation brush and I'm going to buff that into the skin. So just at first glance, the brush does seem to be giving me a slightly fuller coverage. I think that the sponge probably takes away a little bit of the foundation. So I am going to just off camera, I'm going to go in with a little bit more on this side and just try and even up the coverage and I'll be back. So just added a little bit more to this side and just bounced it in with a sponge. And so the coverage is looking a little bit more even, but definitely the brush is giving me a slightly fuller coverage. So it does dry down to a kind of, I would say it's more matte than satin, but it doesn't look like it's kind of drawing all the moisture out of your skin. It doesn't look that matte. It's very comfortable in the skin. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing foundation at all. And it really looks quite good. I will say this side, I would probably say is a little bit too warm for my skin, the shade. I really like this shade, which is the natural tan. But as I say, it didn't really pan out for me yesterday, but we're going to see how it does with the sponge. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of mattifying powder. I'm going in with my Rimmel Stay Matte. And I do like to dust this over my face initially, even if I am using a mattifying foundation. And this definitely helps just to blot excess oils and it also helps to smooth my pores or to give the illusion that they are being smoothed. So just with my skin texture, I can see a little bit of my texture. It's not necessarily exacerbating my pores, but I can still see quite a lot of texture through the foundation. So it doesn't have a lot of slip. I don't think it's got a lot of silicon, which kind of counteracts the texture and just gives you a smoother application. It's definitely giving me a very real appearance. So it's definitely showing through the realness of my skin, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily looking bad at this stage, but I wouldn't say that it is going a huge way to improve texture or to disguise my pores. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of blush. We're going to see just how this applies to the skin and if it moves the foundation around. I'm going in with a blush that has got a little bit of glow because when I'm wearing a matte foundation, I do like to add a little bit of glow to my cheeks. So this is one by Milani and it's in Dolce Pink. It is a very beautiful, quite glowy sort of blush, I would say. So I'm going to dab a little bit of that onto my cheeks. It's not disrupting the foundation at all. It's going on very beautifully. It is adding a little bit of shine to my skin, which is what I want. I want a little bit of glow just in the cheek area, but it's definitely not interrupting the integrity of the foundation. Everything is kind of staying put. So it's all looking quite good. So I'm going to put on a little bit of lipstick and then I'm going to be back before I go about the rest of my day. And we're just going to look at how the foundation has initially applied. So just having a close up look at the foundation, I can say that it looks pretty good. It's definitely not blurring my pores or smoothing my skin texture. So I can still see quite a bit of texture coming through, even on the side where I've applied it with a sponge. But it really doesn't feel like foundation. You can see, obviously, that I am wearing foundation, but it is very light on the skin. And so far, it's looking quite good. So I'm going to go about my day and I'm going to come back and we're going to see how the foundation wears. So guys, I've had the foundation on for seven hours now. I have blotted once today. I haven't touched up or powdered at all. So what are my overall thoughts? Well, my skin is looking really dehydrated. I can say that. My texture seems to be emphasized all over. I must say that the foundation hasn't faded considerably. It hasn't really moved around and it is fairly transfer proof. 
but it has broken up around my nose. It's broken up around my lines here, around my mouth and my chin. And my skin just really looks like it has been sucked of moisture is the only way I can explain it. So really not looking good after the seven hour mark. And I think that that was my fear yesterday as well. I think I did suspect that uh, the foundation was dehydrating me. So not really a good overall look, I must say, and not something that I want from a very expensive foundation. So if you have dry skin, I think this is definitely not for you. If you have really oily skin, it might work for you. Normal to combo, I am not convinced, unfortunately. I think for a really high-end foundation, I just would have expected a lot more from the get-go. And I think if you start having these kinds of questions about a high-end foundation, then the answer has to be an affirmative no, because there are such good drugstore ones that will really tick a lot of the boxes. And so if I had to compare this to, for example, my Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation, I would say that there's no contest. I would say that this one is the best. It's definitely the preferred one and it comes in at about a fifth of the price. So guys, let me know if you've tried this foundation. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe. I am going to leave you with the video to my review of the Catrice Liquid Foundation and I will see you next time. Ciao, ciao.